I have a bit of an interesting video. It's more of an experiment in reproducing Alfa Romeo parts than it is in, uh, say, fixing something or making your car uh, more efficient, more powerful, or more restored. Um, it does fall into the restoration category because I'm trying to reproduce the left and right blinker covers on my 83 Alpha. As part of my studies as an engineering student at RIT, I have to take internships, and one of those has been with Toyota. While here, uh, I have access to machinery and tools that Toyota allows all of their employees to use, and I decided that this would be a good way to introduce myself to the world of 3D printing and 3D scanning clear plastics. And I make that a uh, very distinct uh, statement because I've done uh, regular plastics like ABS and PLA, which are your normal like black 3D printed plastics, the stuff that you get with every 3D printer. It gets a little bit more complex when you start working with different materials. When you start changing your compounds and things like that, you can make different colors and different variations of one material. And I decided that I would try and make this lens using a 3D printer all in one shot. So I've set this table up to do a very basic rundown of 3D scanning. What happens is you have a box that's set up and usually you'll have a table like this. You might have a platform that rotates, doesn't matter. For now, we're just gonna go with this table. And you have your camera here and it has two cameras, kind of like your eyes that look at the object and detect how far away it is. When you have an object that is not transparent, it's very easy. And this is just a normal cup. It has a very basic shape. So the camera can detect something like this incredibly quickly, incredibly easily. Now, where it gets difficult is when you have a clear object. So, the way the camera sees this is not the same because right now, as if you were looking at it or I were looking at it, instead of seeing a pink cup and only a pink cup, I see a clear cup, but I also see the white cloth in the background. So what you do is you take a baby powder or some sort of white powder that will wash off and you'll coat it, right? And that will make your features like this ridge right here or the threads where the cap goes on or even where this handle is easier to detect. So now level three. For a blinker cover, you have features that are not easy to detect because they're very small you have a clear plastic, and you also have to worry about the refraction of light. All of these little ridges inside of this lens reflect and refract light in different ways. So for something like this, the way I approached it was I took a piece of hot glue and I hot glued a screw to the end of this so that I could put it on a turnstile. And I had the box set up here, the turnstile here, and I, as I scanned, I rotated the piece. Now, that's the very simple version of it. I then washed it off so I could show you that it's clear. And my first prototype came out yesterday. This is the very basic ABS plastic prototype. So as we take a look at the two side by side, you can see that it's pretty good. It did a pretty good job on the first try. And I got it to a very basic uh, resemblance of this lens. Inside here, you can see that it has some of the ridges and some of the features that the original lens had. It also displays some of the cracks like this little hole right here. 
that the original lens has that you can't really see with the naked eye. If I get the light just right, you can see it though. So those are some of the pros and cons of 3D scanning something like this. And the more difficult part is putting this into a program and getting the colors to match. Nicely done by Alfa Romeo though, they have this little ridge here where you can separate the colors. So this will be orange and this will be clear. So I decided that I would post this as a two part video. This is the part one where I show you the prototype and then part two will be test fitting and the real deal. I'm pretty excited about this project. It's the first time that I've really had the ability to flex my wings and do some engineering work on this car. Uh, a lot of the rest of it has been getting it to a running and driving condition. And I think I'm comfortable at starting to make it more like a restoration and less of a revival. Believe me when I say I'm nowhere near done posting videos on how to get your car running and driving. Uh, a lot of my stuff for that is older footage and it's just taking me a little bit longer to get collected. Um, but I'm excited to bring that content onto YouTube as well and give you guys a resource for getting your own Alfa Romeos and your own old project cars running and driving. Thank you for watching and as always if you have any questions, tips, or comments please let me know. Until next time, goodbye.